Hi there, this is Vadim Mikhalenko from howtoanalyzedata.net and in this video tutorial I'm going to teach you how to pass advanced Excel assessment test. In case you have any type of Excel assessment test coming up, please make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end to make sure you're ready for the test. Knowing this material made a huge difference for a lot of people and I'm pretty sure it will improve your readiness for the test as well. In this video I'll share with you sample test questions tips, tricks, and hacks on how to pass the test. And I'll show you some additional test resources to get prepared. Let me quickly tell you about myself. My name is Vadim Michalenka, and you can see my picture here on the screen. I have founded howtoanalyzedata.net website with only intent to help people to pass hiring assessment tests and get you hired for your dream job. On this website, you will find a lot of eBooks, practice tests, and assessment test preparation resources. To get more information, please make sure to check out our resource page at howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. And also, please take a moment to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen and turn on notification bell so you can see latest videos we are uploading. I will also appreciate for you to give this video a like and this is the way to tell us that you enjoyed the content and we'll be creating more videos like this in the future. Now, let's get right into the test questions. Now let's look at the question, which tests your knowledge of formulas and functions and used frequently as part of Microsoft Excel assessment test? Which of the following formulas will not return the exact daily average, like in cell G8? And we have four choices. Average, and then you have a range divided by five. Choice B, average, another range divided by five. Then you have G7 divided by five. And then you have sum of values divided by 25. Which one do you think is right? Which one do you think is the right answer? First thing to do to understand these types of questions and answer them correctly is to understand the data. In this section, you have employee data and then you have employees average sales most likely, it doesn't say specifically, but you have days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you have some numeric values associated for each employee for each day. Then you have in column G, total of these values. So for example, total for Emma is calculated in column G as the sum of all the values of Monday through Friday. Then in the cell G7, you see the average value of totals, which is calculated as average of values G2 through G6. Another important concept to understand here is what is average. An average is the sum of values divided by the number of values. For example, we have totals in the column G and then we have average of these totals. And average is calculated as a sum of all five values divided by five. And now let's look at the answers in the reverse order and I'll explain you why. Choice D is the sum of values of B2 through F6 divided by 25. B2 through F6 represent daily values and there are 25 of those values, five employees over a period of five days. And then when we hit enter using this formula, it calculates 314.68, which matches exactly the daily average in the cell G8. Now let's look at the choice seven. In the choice seven, we're dividing the average of totals by five. There are five totals and we're getting the average of totals. And then we're dividing it by five as of five days. And that should give us exactly the same number. Now let's look at the choice B. And in choice B, we're calculating average of values G2 through G6 and then dividing by five because formula of average already calculates them and we're just doing the replacement of formula and dividing by five, it is very similar to choice C, but it gets as an end result exactly the same value of 314.68. And now the final choice, choice A. And the reason I went in the reverse order is because choice A is actually the choice that should be selected because choice A does not calculate the daily average. And this is why we have average of the values B2 through F6, so the same range, and we're dividing it by five. Because we already have daily values in this range, we're basically calculating one-fifths of the average using this formula. And this is why the value will be incorrect. And you see approximately 62.94 is one-fifth of 314.68. And now let's recap. To calculate the average, Excel adds all the numbers together and divides by the total number of values supplied. The correct choice here is choice A, 
because this is a negative question. It asks you to identify something that does not calculate the daily average, and choice A calculates one-fifth, approximately, of the daily average. All answers here, B through D, are equivalent, and they calculate the same value. But choice A is different, because the choice A calculates approximately one-fifth of the daily average. Hopefully you've got this one right. I'd like to ask you to participate in our daily Excel assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of this channel and give you an opportunity to answer this and try it. And I post the answer in the comments next day. So please make sure to check it out and test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the very tricky advanced Excel assessment test question, which is very frequently used as part of the Excel test for accountants, bookkeepers, auditors, controllers, and very similar professions. Every day, $1 bills, as well as $0.01 cent and $0.05 cent coins, are set aside for charity. Assume that column B and F are automated upon inserting quantities. Which formula can you use to calculate total cash for charity in the cell G15 without adding additional formulas? And as always, there are four choices presented. Count if, sum if, sum, and count. Which one do you think is the right one? To answer these types of questions correctly, we first need to analyze what do we have presented on the spreadsheet. If we look inside Excel, we have two sections here. One section is for bills, and we have three columns in that section, value of the bill, quantity of the bills, and an amount calculated. So for example, we have $100 bill. If we insert quantity one for $100 bill, then we will have $100. If we will have quantity one for $50 bill, then we'll have amount of $50. Very similar calculations are for the second section, which represents coins. I added some values into columns B and F to make sure we look at the real numbers. So how would you calculate total cash for charity when you have values in the column B and calculated values in column C and G? Looking back at our original choices presented, both count functions, count if and just count, will never calculate the values we're looking to calculate because they just calculate the number of coins or number of bills. Some if could potentially calculate, but we do not have any conditions here. So there is nothing wrong with using just the sum function. Now let's look at the right answer. As we have learned, count and count if functions are not suitable for this situation because they will calculate count and values and not the sum of values. Some if could potentially be used, but it might be too complex to do the calculations and using some function is totally acceptable and straightforward. So what you see here, choice C is the right choice, and this is the simplest choice possible because almost everybody who uses Excel uses some function. Sometimes you have to use the simplest choice possible to answer the question correctly. Hopefully you've got this one right. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know someone who is getting ready for interview or Excel assessment test, please share this video with them. This is going to help them pass and get their dream job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Now let's look at the question that tests your knowledge of Excel formatting rule. What is the most likely the explanation of the green rectangles in the column C? And you have a picture here, and you have rectangles in the upper left corner of the column C in the category. And there are four choices as typical. The numbers are formatted as text. A value used in a formula is of the wrong data type. A value is not available to the formula or function. And last but not least choice, the formulas in the cell are different from the values in the same column. Which one do you think is right choice? When we click on the cell, and we hover over the green triangle, the error message here is that the number in the cell is formatted as the text or preceded by apostrophe. This is the warning Excel gives us that we cannot apply formulas to these values and we have to reformat them. If you look here in the number section, the formatting chosen is the text formatting. And in order for us to apply formulas, we would have to reformat those values as the number values. So as you might have figured out by now, 
The correct answer is A. The fact that the numbers are formatted as text is highlighted by the green triangle. Answer C is the description of the error pound NA, which is very frequent in Excel, but not relevant in this case. And answer B is the description of the error of the pound value. And answer D is the common error when formulas are copied and then altered, but it is not likely the scenario here. Hopefully you've got this one right. Why you might consider subscribing to this channel? This is one of the fastest way to learn and get prepared for Excel assessment test. Skills you learn are helpful today and in the future. You get answers to your questions. You have opportunity to help other people. And you have experienced professionals who already subscribed to this channel and ready to help you with any answers that you need. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the question which tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel charts and graphs. The graph 1 was created from the range A1 through C4. What are the steps you need to take to convert it to graph 2? You are presented with two screenshots, one of the data in the graph for graph 1, and second one, same data but with the graph 2. There are four choices. Hit select data and then switch row and column. Choice B, right click the leftmost columns in their title and hit delete. Choice C, change the range of the graph to A2 through C4. And then choice D, change the number format of range A1 through A4 and range B1 through C1 to text and reinsert the chart. Which one do you think is right? To better understand the answer to this question, let's jump right to Microsoft Excel and take a look at the data. The reason there are four sets of bars here in this chart, even though we only have two sets of data, is because everything is formatted as the number. You see here product titles. You see the header of column B and column C are formatted as the number. And Excel, when inserting the chart, did not correctly detect the values and even though we wanted to present products and then B1 and B2 cell values as headers in the chart, they were detected by Microsoft Excel as actual values that should be calculated inside the chart. Because headers were included in the calculation, you see this product section, which has one value as one, which matches B1 cell, and then you have second value as two, which matches C1 cell. So how would you convert this chart into the other chart that was presented as part of Excel test question? The correct choice here is choice D. We need to change the number format of the range A1 through A4 and range B1 through C1 to text and reinsert the chart. Let's go ahead and do it. I created a duplicate of this data that we see in the original question right in the columns E through G. And you see it also has all the values and numbers. So first step is we need to convert this range into text. To do that, we need to select the range and then we need to select the text. So the first point was accomplished. Second point is a little trickier. In order for us to represent the number as text, we would need to start this number with apostrophe. And once we click enter, you see this green triangle in the upper left corner, which indicates that this number is actually a text. We'll do the same thing for the second number in the cell G1. Now, as we're done with the conversion, we can reinsert the chart. And you see, once we reinserted the chart, it correctly represents the values. It only has values for product one, two, and three, and no longer has values for the header of the data. Let's recap. The correct choice is D. You need to change the number format of the ranges A1 through C3 and ranges B1 through C1 to text and reinsert the chart. Answer A is insufficient as the legend will still say series one and series two instead of one and two. Answer C will lead you to an error and cannot be done. And answer D is incorrect and will yield a completely different chart. So hopefully you've got this one right. And if you didn't, don't get frustrated. But these are the types of questions that you frequently see on Excel Intermediate and Advanced Excel tests. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up to tell us that you need more content like this. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test.
Now let's look at the very tricky Excel assessment test question, which tests your knowledge of sorting and filtering. You need to configure Excel values, look at the screenshot, to show field names which are not required and include Excel data format number. Which of the below choices will not reach this objective? You have to love this negative questions, so, but you have to pay attention not to reach this objective, which means that three of the choices do reach this objective and one choice does not. What you see here in the data, you see four columns of Excel worksheet, and then you have values here. Some of the rows are highlighted in the blue color, and some of the rows are not highlighted. And obviously, choice C has the option of selecting by color and no fill. Four choices here, as usual. Which one do you think is right? Let's jump to Microsoft Excel here, and I'll walk you through the answers. I have choices side by side with Excel data. What we have here is we have four options. Let's go to option one, custom sort of the table area by column C as A to Z, and then by column D as Z to A. To accomplish this, we need to select the entire set of data in the range, and then we go to the sort and filtering, and then choose custom sort. When dialog box shows up, we need to first select column C, which is a required field, and then we add an order of A to Z, which is the order by default. Then we have to add an additional level here, and then we choose option of column D, which is Excel data format, and then we add order as Z to A. And this sorting and filtering matches our original required criteria. We've selected required fields as no, and an Excel data format as number, and they show up on the top which means that the choice A is not correct because this is a negative question and we're trying to find something that will not lead us to this result. Let's undo this custom sorting and then let's go to the choice B. In choice B, we will apply a filter and what applying a filter means is that you select the first row and then go to sort and filter and apply filter. You see that after application of the filter, we have drop down boxes that showed up here and you can select the drop down box and you have choices for sorting and you have choices for filtering. In choice B, we need to apply filter, which we did, and then sort column C as A to Z. So let's do that. And then sort column D as Z to A. When we completed this, you see that the first choice here was the required field yes, which means that the choice B is most likely the correct answer because it does not meet the required criteria. Now let's undo this by pressing Control Z on the keyboard and let's go and quickly apply choices C and D to see if they help us accomplish the correct results. Let's jump to the choice C. We already have filter applied. All we need to do is sort column D as Z to A. So let's do that. And then we need to filter column C by color and select no fill option. Filtering by color means that we will only select the cells that are of the different color. In the choice of column C, we have two colors in this column. We have light blue color, and then we have no color. So when we select the option here, filter by color, we have choices of light blue and no fill. So we will select no fill. And once we did this, we again accomplished the same results. We have three values that have required field as no and Excel data format as number, which means choice C is not the correct choice because it leads us to accomplish the required objective. And we are looking for the negative answer, which does not lead us to accomplish the required objective. Let me cover one important consideration here. Why choice B and choice C are very different, and that's something you should look for when you do an advanced Excel test. Choice B asks us to do one sorting, and then on top of this, do another sorting. And when you do another sorting on top of the first one, it basically invalidates the result of the first sorting. Choice C asks us to sort the data and then filter the data, which is the valid selection because you can do that. You can sort the data first and then you can apply a filter to the sorted data. And we will see the same pattern in the choice D, which is also lead us to the valid results, which is also incorrect choice. So let's jump and quickly complete the steps for the choice D. I reverted data back to the original state and for the choice D, we need to filter column D by number. So let's do that real quick. To filter by number, we need to select the drop-down box, unselect all the choices, and select the number choice. 
and the next step you sort column C as A to Z. And as you can see, we've accomplished required result. So all required field is null, and Excel data is number, and all of these values are on the top. So which means that choice D also accomplishes required objective, along with choices A and C. So these are not the correct answer, and correct answer is B. Let's quickly recap. Choices A, C, and D will lead us to the same results of the values in category K and M appear on the top. Choice B is the correct choice because it does not lead us to the same results. And main reason choice B does not lead us to the same results is because it asks us to apply one sorting on top of the other. Hopefully you've got this one right. If you didn't get this question right, just know that this is a very tough one and it's not easy to get these types of questions correctly on the test. The best recommendation might be to get a good night's sleep and try to schedule your Excel test in the morning so you have a fresh mind and you can catch all types of tricks that test creators put into the questions like this. A lot of people ask, how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they're getting. If you know the answer to the question that you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Now let's look at the tricky question you frequently see as part of the Excel assessment test. Which Excel test is without VLOOKUP, right? Which formula can be inserted into cell G5 and copied to all the cells of column G in order to calculate the overall price of the items? We have four choices here. Two of the choices use VLOOKUP. Three of the choices use VLOOKUP. One use double VLOOKUP. And the third choice, C, uses FIND function. We also have a data here presented uh, a snapshot from Microsoft Excel so you can visually see the references made in, in the question itself. Which one do you think is the right answer here? To better understand the answer, let's jump to Excel and understand the data first. We have multiple columns of the data and what's most likely presented here are sales of the items. We have item ID in the column A, then we have item description, and then we have item price. Then we have item which is different from the item in the same row. If you look, uh, so column A, for example, A2 is different from E2. Then we have quantity. Ultimately, this is probably a master for the items, how much each item costs. In second table, starting from column E until column G, represents the actual sales. What we're trying to do in this question, what question is asking us, can we find the item that was sold, multiply quantity of the item to the found item to calculate overall price? What's tricky about this question though, and specifically for this one, it's asking you to calculate the value in the cell G5. And by default, the first cell is G2, which is cursors pointing to, but G5 is right here. And all the calculations offered here are for the cell G5. So you have to pay attention and reread the questions. Sometimes they try to trick you and do calculations not in the first cell that's available, but somewhere in the middle of the range of cells that highlighted in yellow. Jumping back to our Excel document, let's calculate the value for the cell G2 first. So for the cell G2, we need to take the value of F2, which is the quantity, and then we need to look up the item from the cell E2 in the range of A through C. So items price for the item 215478, 215478 is $658, and we multiply it by 265. So the correct value of overall price, and you can do the calculations, is 174,370.00. Now if we expand this formula, it will fill up all the values in the column G, and we're interested in the formula in the cell G5. And formula in the cell G5 would be value of F5 and then E5 uh, accordingly to calculate the correct set of values. And this is how this formula looks right in the cell. Now let's recap. The correct answer here is B, which is uh, F5 multiplied by VLOOKUP of E5 and then the range. And then you're looking up the uh, ID of the item is 3, the index of the item is 3. Answer A is incorrect in this case because uh, the last parameter must be false to yield an accurate result. Answer C is incorrect because find is not the right function here to use. And answer D is incorrect 
since it doesn't set the fixed lookup range using the dollar signs. So hopefully you've got this one right. It was a tricky question, but you see a lot of this as part of intermediate and advanced Excel assessment tests. So can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please post in the comments of this video to share with others. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the tricky Excel assessment test question, which we frequently see as part of the tests. Company A is looking at four possible activities and will accept them if the IRR is 10% or above, as appeared in the cell E2. What is the formula utilized in cell C2, which can also be copied down to cells C through C5 to produce the required results? There are four choices here, all use if formula, and there is a table here which represents the activities. What do you think is the right answer? Let's see if we can nail this question together. Let's jump to Excel and take a look at the data that is presented here. First of all, what is IRR? IRR is the internal rate of return. So you have some activity and you calculate return on investment for that particular activity. It is internal return on investment. So it's calculated a little bit differently, but the idea is the same. We do not need to calculate IRR here, but it's good to understand because this is a confusing, this data might be confusing if you do not understand what IRR means. Now let's look at the data. I calculated accept status here, and this is how the formula looks like. We have to use absolute reference here for the cell E2, because as we move and start to project the data and expand it, if we need to uh, reflect this formula for all of the activities, then the value of E2, if we don't use absolute value, will also start shifting. So let me demonstrate. For example, right now, because we use absolute reference, if I am going to expand this formula, it will be correct. It will calculate it correctly. But if, for example, this formula wouldn't be absolute value, it would be just a relative value, and we accept it, it will still calculate it correctly for the cell C2, but as soon as I start expanding it, it will just calculate it incorrectly because it will take the value from this cells and here the value is zero so it's always look looks acceptable because zero will always be less than any one of these values in the b3 b4 b5 so let's recap the correct answer here is a because in this case of the a it uses absolute references case b is incorrect because it uses relative references and answer d is incorrect because there is an error in the syntax of the formula here. So hopefully you've got this one right. It's a tricky question. Some of the answers do lead to the correct results for one cell, but because question itself is asking what is the formula utilized in cell C2, which can also be copied down to cell C3 through C5, that's the part that confuses you, and that leads to only one correct answer here on the list. Thanks for watching. Hope you have learned something and had fun at the same time. Please make sure to check out my other relevant videos. I know they helped a lot of people and I'm pretty sure they will help you as well. Please consider premium resources from our ebook store at howtoanalyzedata.net. It has tons of resources to help you get ready for the interview and assessment test. Also, please make sure to check out for relevant downloads in the description of this video. If you find a mistake in my recommendations, please do not judge us too harshly as we are only trying to help, but mistakes are unavoidable. Please post the correct answer in the comment section of this video to help people succeed in the test. Take a moment and click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen and make sure to like, share, comment and ask me any questions. I am happy to answer every question I receive. All the best on your interview and assessment test.